What's up everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how to texture a stylized uh, prop. So this is something I just kind of modeled up uh, quickly and uh, I can show you some little tricks I did. It's a very super simple, easy way to do things. Um, I'm going to provide this model as well. Uh, I had somebody ask me if they could use uh, some of my art as their portfolio uh, stuff. So I mean, this stuff is uh, images I grab online just for tutorial purposes. I don't use this for my uh, portfolio. I do switch up a lot of the concept art, but um, I mean, this is more just for learning curves, if anything. So uh, I'm going to kind of show you just uh, a breakdown on how you can uh, texture this. So let's get started. I have uh, everything here that I already did. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, I don't, uh, if you're... Uh, your user interface is uh, a little bit different than mine. Uh, try to follow along the best you can. Uh, I just do this because I, I like having more of an area in the middle there. Uh, so let's start this off here. Um, I'm going to add a fill layer. So this is going to be my base uh, for, for this guy right here. So I'll just type uh, base. Base. Okay, let's grab a color here. I had something like a, a blue. I'm going to change this to dynamic, so um, I guess something like that. Uh, a lot of stylized props don't really have um, reflections and stuff like that, at least from what I think. Um, this is more of a mix of stylized and realistic, so I'm going to keep a little bit of a reflection on this. So I'm just going to keep mostly all my surfaces at a roughness of 0 0.5. Just more of a neutral, so it does have a little bit of glare. So um, another way to just keep this really organized is folders. Uh, folders would be your best friend. So I'm going to fill this uh, folder in there. That's the folder file there. And uh, what you can do is just add a black mask on that folder. So whatever's in that folder can be allocated by just clicking the, the polyfill. Let's grab the object. So I want this to be that color. I want this, this, this. Uh, that's pretty good to start. Let's start off like that, okay? So here's my base. This is like some type of paint, paint layer. Um, I want to add another fill layer, and the reason why I'm going to add that is because this is going to go underneath. This is going to be metal. <coughs> oh, I just realized it came out of the folder, so make sure it stays in the folder. I'm going to put this metallic value again up to 0 0.5. So uh, a lot of people don't like um, the 0 0.5. They either like it's either metal or it's not. In this uh, specific tutorial, I'm going to keep it at 0 0.5, like I said. Same with this as well, the roughness. Oh, what's happening here? 0 0.5. Okay. So it's got a little bit of a metallic value, which is exactly what we need. Okay, so to get that metal edge wear, I'm going to right click on this, add a black mask. Okay, in that black mask, make sure it's highlighted. I'm going to go here, I'm going to add a generator. I uh, right clicked on it, generator. Click the generator, add edge wear. So what's going to happen is you can see that. Um, it's taking the paint and it's it's putting it in the wrong spot. I want to I want to reverse this. I want to invert this. So right here under parameters, there's this button invert false. So I'm going to turn it to true. And what that does is it'll show this layer underneath. So let's just for purposes, I'm just going to show you see what it does there. OK, so let's just keep that back to a neutral color. Um, some issues with using generators and metal edge wear, um, it does look repetitive. Um, it does look like in spots there shouldn't be any dent, uh, sorry, scratches, and it just doesn't look real. It just looks very procedural. So you kind of want to break that up. Uh, I'm going to break that up a little bit later. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger there. Uh, another thing you can do is add some height to it. Right, so if you add some height, uh, too much height, not good. Uh, what I like to do is crank the height up and then come to the layer stack, change it to height, and just kind of play with this. A little bit more control, uh, something like that. I don't, th I think that's too much still. We'll do it like that. 
Okay, so that's our start. Um, <clears throat> I want to get some grunge on there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to turn this off for now. Uh, I'll do it like that. Okay, so I want to get some grunge on there. I want to start breaking up this 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 layering here. So what I'm going to do is uh, Control D to duplicate it, or you can just right click on it, duplicate, and uh, I'm going to change the color here to a little bit darker, and I'm going to show you exactly why. Okay, so again, I'm going to I'm going to go over top of it, add a black mask so it gets rid of that uh, the edge wear, and inside the mask, I'm going to add a fill. Okay, so you got your grayscale here. I'm going to go to procedurals. Oh, no, sorry, grunges. And I'm going to look for a grunge that I think would work best. Uh, let's go to... Hmm, let's go here, grunge dirt scratchy. And I'm just going to grab that and drag it into the grayscale. Uh, I'm also going to kill the height. I don't need height. I don't need emissive. I don't need normal. I don't need metal. So what that's doing is adding that little dirt over top of it. Uh, this one I'm going to change to 0 0.6. Uh, it might not look like it did a lot, but it does. It breaks up the surface detail. So again, let's go back to 0 0.5. See how it's flush? You can't really see it. When I change this number to 0 0.6, I see it a lot more. Uh, some people get confused about how roughness works in, uh, in game engines and in everything. Uh, the rougher you put something, the darker it gets. The lighter, sorry, the less you do roughness, sorry, so if you go to like a zero, you can still see it, but it does break up the, the contrast a little bit, right? So I'm going to bring this back to 0 0.6. That's not bad. Not bad. Okay. I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm going to add a lighter version of it now. I'm going to add a black mask. Click on the fill, uh, the black mask, add a fill. And this time I'm going to go for something a little lighter to uh, get those, those edge wears and the highlights. Um, let's do... Yeah, we can add some scratches maybe. Let's add some scratches. Uh, balance, a little bit like that, scratch quantity, maybe something like this. I don't even like that. I know what we're going to do. Okay, scratch that. We're going to keep that same color, black mask. Uh, most stylized props have more of a highlight around the edges. So there's a quick way to do this. If you come to here, black mask, add a generator, curvature. Right, there we go. Curvature. So we're just gonna get some highlights there, blur it out a bit, contrast up. No. So there you go. You got some highlights there. Uh, it's not the best right now. You gotta tweak it. You gotta play around with it. Uh, if you turn the blur all the way down, I think it goes a little bit too much there. I don't like the color. Color's too much. So we're gonna go lower. We're gonna desaturate it a little bit, maybe a little bit darker. Not bad. Okay. That is good for the base. So I'm going to show you how I did the decal as well. Um, we're going to add another fill layer. I'm going to go here, grab an orange, an orange that I like. That's pretty good. Again, we're going to do 0 0.3. Uh, 0 0.5, kill the height, kill the normal, roughness we're going to keep, metallic we're going to get rid of, and emissive. Going to add another black mask. So there's a few ways you could do this. Um, I like to work in the 2D, 3D. Uh, I mean, by all means, this is not an optimized UV space. This open area is ridiculous. I should have some stuff in there. But uh, I just did a quick pack, and uh, it's nothing crazy. But if you're using this, if you're using a prop for a portfolio, spend some time on the UV quality. Uh, it goes a long way. Uh, but anyways, let's get back to this. Um, so I'm in the black mask. I'm gonna come to I think it's an alpha. We're gonna type in square. Uh, square, 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 square. Here it is. Perfect. 
So, two ways we can do this. One, we can just draw it straight on here. Uh, we can do this here. So click at the bottom here, hold shift, and I think it's control to activate the snap. Yeah, shift and control, and just draw a line across. Okay, I uh, got some bleeding there, but I'll fix that. And now I'm going to bring this brush uh, lower. If you don't know how I'm doing that, just hold control and move your mouse left and right. That controls the size of it. It's just It's very quick instead of going up to the side here and size, come here, oh, it's too low. Um, so let's keep going. So I'm going to just put the size that I want here. I'm going to do the same thing I'm on both sides. There we go. So that should technically wrap around. You're going to have some weirdness here. Um, but we're going to clean that up. I'm going to go back into the mask here. I don't want this decal on the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is make sure it's my black color. And I'm just going to grab that object there get rid of it so you can see we have a little bit of an issue jagged lines and stuff like that uh, I'm going to show you a way to, to fix that as well so being in the mask make sure you're on your brush you're going to come here uh, I'm going to grab I'll make it a little bit bigger and make sure it's on black and I'm just going to do the same thing I'm just going to clean it up um, Substance does a pretty good job with this projection mapping, but uh, it does have artifacts, so you definitely do have to clean it up. Uh, what I'm doing here is just making the brush a little bit bigger than what I used, and I'm just going through it to just create some straight lines. There we go. There we go. So that kind of gets rid of the jaggedness. I'm also going to show you another way to clean it up, but um, for now, this should be good. There we go. There we go. Um, so, <clears throat> on this mask, I'm going to add a filter, and I'm going to add a blur. And what this blur is going to do is just kind of clean up those jagged edges a little bit. Uh, let's bring it maybe to 0 0.10 be good I mean if you're zooming into your, your your model and you're like oh my god look at this look at this no one's gonna see this in a game that close no one's gonna no one's gonna go up to this model and be like oh my god look at these jagged edges I mean to me I'm, I'm a perfectionist in in a sense so I don't like that stuff it bothers me so I am gonna clean that up but I'm gonna use a different method now with that blur filter on so I'm gonna go to the brush the soft brush I'm going to make sure I'm on that mask, soft brush. So I'm just going to kind of try to smooth these edges out. That doesn't even look good. Oh, I just noticed something here. I'm just going to go in and just oh, make sure your, uh, your mask is white. I'm just going to paint some stuff in that I see I missed. Right here. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so we have that decal there. I want to try to break up um, the look of this. Usually a decal is a little bit less rough. So I'm going to keep it within this, the one factor. So I'm just going to change it to 0 0.4 to make it a little bit more shiny. Okay, that's pretty, uh, pretty good. Pretty, 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 pretty good. Okay, so what I did, um, I usually make uh, smart materials. If you don't know how to make a smart material, let's say you have a folder like this, and we'll just call this uh, base style. Okay, I have all these preset layers in the in uh, inside uh, of a folder, right? So if I right click on it, it'll say create smart material. So what that does under your Smart Material tab, it'll create this, this. I guess it's uh, just a material. It's the same as this, but it's a smart material. <laughs> so let's say, uh, for argument's sake, I wanted to delete this, and I had something that I liked that I made before. I can just throw this back in, and it works. So it's more of a preset. Uh, I mean, i got some stuff here that I've worked on before. Not everything's going to work. I have some attic wood that I made. Um, 
stuff like that as you can see that some of the things don't get masked in and that's just because of the way that I created it for my past assets but um, smart materials are a fantastic way to build a library to quicken up your pace too so I mean taking some time to to learn shortcuts goes a long 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 way uh, so yeah anyway let's get back into this so that's done um, hmm. What else do I want to work on? Let's work on some metal chunks now. I want this stuff to be metal. Uh, so let's create another folder. We're going to call it metal. And I'm going to go in there. We also have to work on the edge where I don't want to forget that. Um, maybe I should do that right now instead of jumping over to that. So let's go back to this metal base uh, right here. The metal ware. I'm going to lift that up. So we got that going on right now. I'm going to shut the curvature off. The curvature is uh, overkill, actually. We're going to delete that for now. Uh, okay, so back to what I was saying before. It's uh, It just grabs all of the, the ed edges. It's um, I believe that mask uses curvature right here. So what it's going to do is everywhere where there's a 90-degree angle or just a hard turn, it's going to add some surface damage to it. The problem with this is, is that it doesn't look natural. Like, why would I have edge wear in there? Why would I have, um, let's see where else I can show you. Like edge wear in here. Uh, if, let's say we were to take this and it were to fall on its side. This and this will stop any damage from happening here. Unless it's like more something specific that hits it, uh, hits a chunk off or something. So, I mean, I like to break it up. I like to get rid of some stuff, so I'll put the metal edge wear on, and I'll come right-click, add a paint layer. So what the paint layer does is allows me to paint out the metal, the metal, the the wear, right? So let's come to brushes, uh, artistic heavy sponge. Doesn't matter. You guys can use any of these presets. I got a bunch of um, bunch of brushes that I've purchased or I've gotten some off uh, the internet for free. Uh, so let's click this, make sure I'm on black right here and I'm just going to start, oh, oh, sorry, I need to be on white. So what I'm going to do is just start painting out the stuff that I think is a little bit overkill. Uh, some stuff here I want to get rid of more so in the inside, right? Stuff like this. Uh, there could be damage up here. And if you want to add some extra damage right there, that's, you could do that too. I don't like that, so I'm just going to kind of paint that out. All right, let's keep painting it. Paint, 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 paint. There we go. Uh, there's no way damage would get into there. No way damage would get into there. Break up this damage here. Even kind of try to paint out the, the chips in the inside. Okay. I mean, you don't have to be super accurate. You can if you want to, but I mean, it's supposed to be a stylized prop too, right? So, I mean, hyperrealism isn't going to really do this justice. So, let's keep going. All right. Here we go. Paint this all out here. Paint this out here. I want no damage there. I want to keep some damage around those. Okay. Same thing here. Same thing here. Okay. Uh, we could also, um, I mean, if this is damaged, so should this, right? So let's go back to this layer. I'm going to add a paint. I'm going to use that same brush. I'm just going to kind of paint out some chunks, some, some wear, right? I mean, you can kind of get rid of that there. Some chunk damage there. Even here. You know, just kind of make it, um, make it match what it's doing. Uh, I mean, you have damage here, so essentially you should have some other things that are damaged. 
but we'll just notice that there. I'm going to click polyfill. I'm going to go to face. And I'm just going to take these away. Okay. Not bad. Pretty happy with that. Uh, another thing we're going to add right here is more of a decal. So we're going to go back to this paint layer. I'm going to go to my brush and I'm going to click all here and I'm going to type in uh, type. And Substance has uh, some alphas here that you can uh, you can type. So I'm going to kind of look for something that's more mechanical, which is uh, this, this guy here. Um, whatever you want to choose. I mean, I used, uh, I think it was like N96 or whatever it was. Um, Go here, we're going to take the angle jitter off, flow jitter, size jitter. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. My angle should be at zero. And I'm just going to scale this up. Make sure it's white and stamp. Okay. Good, 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 good. All right, let's go back to... Uh, Let's get a dark metal here. So we're going to add another folder and name this dark, dark metal. Add a fill layer inside of there. I'm going to make it dark. I'm going to add the black mask to my layer stack and I'm going to go to polyfill and I'm just going to choose the things that I want to be black metal. Things like that. Uh, we're going to do all this stuff. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to fix that in a second. Okay. Good. All right, so let's go back to this. Right here, we're going to kill the height. Kill the emissive, kill the normal, change this to 0 0.5, change this to 0 0.5, okay, so the darkness is a little bit too dark, that's good, okay, so to get that metal scratch, the metal details, let's add another fill layer, kill the color this time, kill the normal, kill the metal, kill the height, emissive, and we're just going to have roughness. Uh, I'm going to right click, black mask, add a fill layer, got the grayscale, I'm going to come to grunges, scratch, and we're going to use um, grunge scratch dirty. Okay, so what that is doing, I'll show you, let's add a 0 0.6 and let's bring this down hmm. did I do something wrong there oh no there we go okay it's just because of the lighting so it's adding uh, some surface detail if I cut that off it's just flat add that on it's pretty good uh, I might even add the color and uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because it's not popping as much as I want it to be. So I'm grabbing the eyedropper tool, grabbing this color here. And what I'm going to do is lighten it. All right, got some edge wear there. That's pretty good. I mean, some surface detail. Uh, okay, let's add another fill layer. And this is going to be, again, 0.5. This is going to be 0 0.4 now. Kill the height, normal, emissive, and color we're going to keep. I'm going to right click, add a generator, metal edge wear. Okay. Uh, let's get the wear down a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm going to add a paint layer again. And we're going to do the exact same thing that I did at the top there with the edge wear because there are some areas that shouldn't have any damage. So we'll go like that in here. These guys. Just want to kill that procedural look. I don't want it to look like, you know, just make it look nice. Take some time. Okay, in here. I mean, 
there shouldn't technically be any damage there either. We'll soften it up. Okay. Uh, this is a lens. So, I mean, just kind of drop that there. Um, I'm going to go back to this mask and I'm just going to go to the polygon fill and I'm going to just go from the side try my best to line this up and just get rid of that. I don't want that to be affected. Okay. Oh, excuse me. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. okay. So, I mean, for, for argument's sake, let's just add a color that we want. There we go. This would be the lens. Uh, if you drop it under there, you don't have to worry about masking it, even though you should. There we go. Okay. Uh, just to add like a little bit of an effect, like a stylized prop, I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm going to lighten this. And what this is going to do, 0 0.5, this is going to do is we're going to add another, we're going to re-black mask it. Okay. Go to our uh, brush here. Uh, basic hard and I'm just going to draw like a highlight so something like that nope maybe something like this okay something like that switch to black there we go okay sharpen that look sharpen this Okay, cool. Um, another thing we can do with this, if you want to add some detail to it, <coughs> is um, let's add another fill layer. Bring that underneath there. We're going to do color, metal, height, roughness, emissive. We're just going to keep a normal here because I want to add a little bit of detail to there. I'm going to come to uh, hard surface. Uh, let's get grid crossed throw that in there. That's affecting my entire model. Uh, it's because we haven't masked that layer. We haven't masked these layers either. It's just sitting underneath it. But, uh, we're we're going to fix that. So I'm going to come to here. Uh, let's do 15. Nope. Let's go to 25. And we're going to change, change this uh, projection to triplanar. That should kind of strain out some of those issues there. I'm going to add a black mask. And I'm going to do the same thing with the, the polygon drab. So let's do that there. Okay, there we go. Okay. Rotate around. Let's see how it looks. Okay, not bad. So the issue that we're having here is that the normal map is too prominent. It's bumping out. It's too obvious. You want subtlety. Uh, subtlety is key. So again, Coming to the layer stack here, switch to normal now, and we're just going to bring this opacity down just a little bit. Just some subtlety. Just some subtlety. See that? Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, if you don't know how I'm rotating the lighting, it's just shift and holding right click and just left and right. Oh, you can go up and down too. I didn't know that. Um, okay. Let's keep going here. Uh, I'm noticing that my black, my dark metal should be a lot darker. I don't like that look there, so we're just going to bring this a little bit lower. And it's bringing out that detail, too. Um, I'm going to make some plastic for this. Um, let's go black all the way down. Change this roughness to 0 0.6. No metallic, no normal, no height, no emissive. Black mask. And we're going to just grab these like that. Okay. Bring this light up a little bit. Do, 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 do. Okay. So I'm going to show you another technique. Uh, we're going to add the height back. <coughs> I'm going to go to height. Dirt. Five. This is a little technique just to give it a little bit of surface detail. I'm going to make the bounce. 
that. Uh, maybe let's scale a little bit. And we're going to go to height. And we're just going to turn this down very low to like 2. Okay. Could even technically drag this down uh, under the base of it. I think this is the base. There we go. Nope. There we go. And I want to paint out some of that edgeware again. Go to brushes. Just kind of find something you want to play around with. There we go. Good. Good, 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 good. Um, there's another little tr trick I'm going to show you how to uh, make your, your asset look a little bit better. Um, this is going to sit over top the entire layer stack. So go to a fill layer, make it black, black all the way down. Uh, take off the metal, take off everything but the color. I'm going to go to the, I don't know what this is called. I completely spaced out there. I'm just going to change it to multiply. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to smart masks. I'm going to type in OCC for occlusion. And I believe it is this one. So what we're doing right now is we're adding some occlusion. If you can see the difference there, it really makes your, your, your asset pop. I do this for, I'd say, 99.9% .9 of my assets. So uh, again, we're going to crank this up a little bit. Bring the grudge down. Maybe even a little bit more. Grudge down. And we're just going to bring that base color down. Something like that, which looks pretty good. Uh, I mean, if you can't see the difference here, I'll show you. You can really see, like, it, 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 it adds a lot of depth to it. I love doing this to my assets. I feel like it makes it a lot nicer, a little bit more prominent. Uh, I think even that might be a little bit too high because it's adding some grunge. Also, I'm going to add this little guy up here. There we go. So there's one more thing I want to do. Uh, I want to add, I, wanna, I just want to make this panel black. That also is going to sit over top of everything. So we're going to do black. I'm going to bring my roughness all the way up. I'm going to kill metal. If you do uh, roughness value one, metallic value one, black all the way down, this is literally the darkest thing you could make in 3D. Uh, nothing even in the world has this kind of value uh, not even like charcoal like charcoal still has like a little bit of a shine to it so this is literally just killing it so i'm not going to have any metallic on it height normal emissive black mask and i'll go to the face and i'm just going to start just grabbing some faces in here because i want it to look hollow not hollow sorry like open so there we go Grab this guy here. Don't even. Uh, maybe we can do these guys like this too. Okay. Good. Good. So I'm noticing that my edge wear on my metal is causing this to have zero color whatsoever. So we're going to paint out most of the edge wear there. And the reason why that's happening is that I have a value for the edgeware that works for other surfaces, but it's not working for this. So we're just going to kind of paint that out. And you can see the difference when I have it there. The edgeware is just overtaking the UVs. It's a tiny UV, nothing crazy. There we go. Okay, so with, uh, with this black right here, I think I made a mistake modeling there, but uh, that's okay. Um, so choosing that layer, let's go here. We're going to grab a uh, soft, and I'm just going to start coloring in some vents, some holes. Because I want this to look like vents. Right now, it doesn't look like vents. There we go. So from far away, you could tell it looks way better. 
Uh, even here, we're going to do that right here. So what that does is just kind of gives it the illusion of um, a hole. Same with this. Oh my. I didn't put a face back there. That's okay. No one's going to look in that barrel. Hopefully not. Um, okay, so base is pretty much done. Pretty much done. The red is a little bit too saturated, so I'm just going to bring that down as well. Darker too. Same with the highlight. Okay. Um, we could do the knobs the same color red. Pretty good. Um, there's also something I've tried to show in uh, show in other tutorials. It's a little bit more advanced, but um, it brings your model a long way. You can add some detail without modeling it. So I'm gonna come up to this little um, this little world. I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna change it to PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending. Okay, this is just something uh, for the Substance Renderer. And what that does is it allows me to use some opacity. And when I mean opacity, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to come here to where channels is, and I'm going to click this little plus, opacity. And what that does is it adds it to the layer stack, the, the fill layer. So we're going to add another fill layer here, kill everything but the opacity, and see what it does when I bring it down. So I'm going to bring it down to zero, add a black mask, come here change it to basic hard and what you can do here is just kind of add some detail the barrel I might not even keep this I didn't even do this before uh, but I mean it's about learning what you can do with the software and then kind of pushing it to the limit. You don't need to do that. Technically, we could have used our black and just, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really add up there. So we're going to keep that opacity there. I kind of like it. Uh, the issue is, is that if somebody looks on an angle, it's going to see that there's a bleed through. It might be better to just model it. But I mean, this is just like a quick way to just add that that depth to it, right? Uh, the problem is too, you can't get through there. So if it's a double-sided geometry, you kind of got to do your best to kind of really line it up, which I'm surprisingly actually doing it. This is a terrible way, but it works. So see, that's the problem. It, it, it bleeds through, there's no walls on the inside. But it'll work for what we're trying to accomplish here. So boom, let's do that there, there, and there. I don't even think that lined up. Nope. There we go. Not bad, not bad, not bad. So you, I mean, you gotta, when you're modeling and texturing something, you also need to figure out how is this asset gonna be used? Is it gonna be used as a third person? Is it gonna be first person? Will the player be able to go up to a close? I mean, if it's something like this in the game, Let's take like something from like Outer Worlds or uh, something like that. Um, the player is going to see it from far away. They're not going to be able to go up to it. So, I mean, just keep that in mind when you're modeling. Be specific in what you're making. So let's go to the dark metal here. I'm going to add this to the back here. I'm going to go to polyfill. Uh, no, just the face. And I'm just going to come to the side. I'm going to grab that. Switch it. Exit that out. Okay, and then I'm going to come to brush. So, I want to have a little bit of uh, paint here. So, I just switched my mask. I think I made a mistake. Let's just paint this in. Alright, 
red. Let's switch that to black. Kind of clean this up. We don't want that paint to really bleed in. There we go. Get this guy out of there. This guy out of there. Mm, there we go. Okay. Looking good. Looking good. Next is going to be these wires. So I have a color palette going on here. It's saturated colors, desaturated colors, whatever it is. Uh, the wires, you can literally use the red or you can design something different. We're going to add a fill layer. Put it underneath there. Um, I mean, we can try like a dark green. How does that look? Not bad. Not bad. Change that value again. I don't want any of this stuff on there. Okay. Uh, if you want to add some lines across it or just add some a little bit more of a texture, what you can do is duplicate that layer. Um, add a different color. Black mask. Uh, fill layer. And uh, let's go to procedurals. Look for something we kind of want. Uh, Oh, we can try that. Make that tile to 16. Maybe even... I mean, something like that's not bad. I think I made a mistake. Um, I think this should actually be here. Uh, do you, was it hold alt? And yeah, we're just going to switch these colors around. I'm going to bring this darker. And I'm going to bring this lighter. There we go. Um, I mean, so the way this works is, let's make this larger, find that shape. Uh, the fill layer will mask. It's like a mask, pretty much. Uh, so what it's doing is it's taking um, this color and popping it out, which is the bottom color. And the black is masked out. And it just creates this tiling thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if I even like that color, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much uh, it. Uh, when it comes to stylized art, it's not a, it's not as crazy detailed as a high realistic art. Uh, I mean, you can get away with a lot, um, a lot of things in this. Uh, but that's that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I mean, if you have any questions, uh, if I did something wrong and, and you don't get it, uh, feel free to just comment. And I mean, I answer most of my comments, and uh, that's it. So <clears throat> let's uh, let's give this a render. Yeah, looks pretty good. Uh, I did something, so you might be noticing that I did um, only one arm, and the reason why I did that is because then when I bring it back into a game engine, I duplicate this arm, and I bring it over to this side, and then, I mean, sharing the UVs, right? I added a little band-aid there, right? Just, it's, it's what you can do. It's learning the program, learning what it can do. And uh, really just stepping forward from there, right? So, I mean, that's the end of this tutorial. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. Take care.